Greetings, hello, welcome. Um, so as you will know that yesterday, oh Saturday, it's now Monday morning actually technically, yeah, this is what depression can do to you and that, you know, keep you up all night. Anyway, it's not, say it's gone half past twelve, half past midnight, so still in the realms of normality for some before work day. Anyway, that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is, is to have a little discussion about not just airfix, airfix in this case, but not just airfix. Airfix are a big part of my problem. I'm about to cover. <laughs> yes, ranting coming. Um, warning, warning. Um, but it's not an entirely they're just all rubbish because of X rant. It's a much more balanced. I'm just gonna tag on this if I can because we've got a blue background behind me at the minute. Oh, okay, maybe not. Uh, let's just minimise that down just so it's not reflecting anyone else's video in the back. Though it's got videos playing on the TV just to what's it? But I had to stop because of this. Now, for those of you yesterday, I went on on Saturday. I went on Arrow Traction WR963 for an engine run. Yes, see the merch. <laughs> had a great time, met up with Greg and his partner Rachie, fantastic wonderful time and I already had an inkling before I went that I'd be wanting to build a Shackleton when I came back. Now as you know from previous video, I in the channel update I sort of said I'm going to try to finish projects that I've already started rather than starting new ones. The shack was something that I was allowing myself because I just knew I was going to come back wanting to do one. Okay, so that's the preamble. So Ahead of time, I pulled this out of the uh, out of the out of the stash, out of the loft, which is Airfix's Shackleton uh, MR2 in size two scale. Actually, comes as WR963 on the box because they're uh, in similar sort of scheme to what it wears now, such it's got red spinners along there, and this prop has uh, red and white um, has the carryover of the red and white. Uh, prop tips from when it was an AEW2, which is still basically is. So there's a lot going on without Shackleton. So I started to build that one last night. Yeah, da 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 da. Oh, soon I put my picture again. Now, something I hadn't noticed in real life is that the Shackleton's actually lost its guns again. Uh, meaning now it is a white and grey AEW2 without its HS, well, without, sorry, without its radar underneath, basically. Um, yeah. So I thought, okay, I'm not wasting that kit on this build then, because what makes that one stand out, and I'm really disappointed in Airfix, they only included one scheme of the turrets, but what makes that kit stand out is the fact you've got the, both an upper turret and you've got the front gun as well, the front guns as well. Um, I'm really disappointed they didn't put, scheme B is not another turreted Shackleton, it's actually essentially almost what, what WL963 is at the minute. But anyway, okay, not a problem. Brought up scale mates. I've got plenty of Shackleton's in the stash, you see. All the, the airfix ones and a couple of the Revell ones as well. Revell, Revell? I don't know. Anyway. I... Uh, so I, I do that, and uh, I, I see that the AW2 kit, which also comes as an R6, WR963, is the scheme B in that one. The Ray Dome attaches to a segment of Bombay, that goes under here and it's only got it's got a ridge guideline to fit the radome underneath that brilliant i thought bit of sanding bit of gentle cutting you know scraping smooth it off take that off and i've basically got you know a non-gunned wr963 which i can do in the scheme i can do it basically as it was yesterday i went in it which includes such things as leaving these side doors off because both of those were removed before prior to our run and they were open for the run so that's 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 uh how it's going to be i was even thinking about potentially trying to weather it up um as per with all the moss growing on it and all the other crud that's on it which really needs sorting out <laughs> to be honest um saw enough for young volunteers walking around that was really a drop for them but anyway that's them to decide to sort out it's their aircraft so yes so Today, obviously not going up in middle of the night or anything like that when I realised this, but today I went up and I grabbed one of my EW2s, actually the first one I came to hand. And I went back down here 
box was freezing. It's very cold here in the UK at the minute. Box was freezing. Probably doesn't do anything to it, but like electrical components, I've got to see with them. If they're cold, let them acclimatise first, you know? So I let this go acclimatise before do, doing anything with it. But I opened the box, had a look, see what was going on. And it turns out I'd already started this one. So, wow, bingo, bo you know, bingo bongo, that's all of Harry Houdini's um, things. Sorry, Harry, didn't mean to do that. I, mean to do that. I, 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 I know it's something human, all sorts of people do it, and it's one of my bad traits. I pick things up from people and I use them without even realising I'm using them. So, I do use a catchphrase, or I apologise, it's not intentional. I'm not trying to bask in your glory or, you know, whatever. Oh, blimey, bask, I bask the cat, that's another one, isn't it? You know, <laughs> anyway. But that's actually the name of his cat, so whatever. Anyway, back to the skirt, back to the track kit. So I'd already started it, I thought, fantastic, wonderful, super stuff I can get on. And it ties into my finishing a kit I'd already started as well. I looked at it and I thought, I've actually got quite far with this. See, insert picture. Okay, I wasn't able to insert the picture, but you saw it there. Okay. Um, what made me stop? What made me stop? I don't know. Anyway. Then I started having a look. Did a test. The next stage on this, the time is out, is actually to fit the two halves of the fuselage together. As per instruction step 28, is that there? Yes, 28. Okay. Yeah. The fit is terrible, and I could already see I'd already hacked out part of the Bombay at one end. Because you're not going to see it on the AW2 or, you know, whatever. What's going on here? So I had to redo, completely reseat the seat and nose. I primed the other side black, I'm just going to leave it like that, you, can, you can't see inside, which brings me on to what's causing the problems in here. So as you can see, there's an elastic band around the tail. That is keeping those two pieces at the bottom, note, only the bottom together. You can see the glue running up there. I've had to apply liberal amounts of glue, it's still not closing up properly down there. But yeah, the fuselage is best closed here and here. The rest of it is an absolute mess right down there under there what i've done now is i actually run a knife around the rest of it and where it's not actually meeting i've cut the glue away i'm gonna have to work my way around the aircraft glue 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 hold glue hold glue hold glue hold all around to try and close it all up as much as possible this isn't good enough this is not good enough. Now I've seen plenty of builds of this. I know it can be built, which got me thinking. I wonder if they've put all the stuff inside. There's a ton of stuff in here. That, how much did you, did you just see? I'm just showing you up close. Exactly. And this is part of my, my, my big complaint. We're getting stuff in these aircraft, which one, well models, one you can't see it. <laughs> It takes time and you can't see it. I do remember now that I look back, I did actually manage to find some pictures previously of this build and the timestamps on those photos. And I started to remember as well of how long it took to do that bit, how long it took to do that bit. Now, it's not a hobby I want to rush, I want to enjoy the build, but that's the thing, it's a time consuming process that doesn't actually add up to anything. I'm not one of those people that can just live on, well, I know it's there. You know, if I. Let's say I built, I, I, when, I finish, when I finish this chakra book, it'll all be in there. I'll finish it. And given that I'm leaving two great big holes in the side opening, you still can't see in there. Um, but I finished it, I finished chakra up, um, and I donated to a museum. So it's not in my possession anymore, and I'm not going to be with it 100% of the time when there's someone there looking at it. Are they going to know it's in there? No. So what? why Why is it in there? Is that something that's good for you? But for me, it's just like, well, why is it in there? Now, for those of you who follow the channel, um, and thank you if you do, it's a very selfish channel. I run it for myself. It's, it purely benefits me. <laughs> um, you know, but if you enjoy what I put down, you, you like to come off the ride, then that's wonderful. Um, you'll know I've recently finished a Dambuster Lancaster. 
Uh, this is the old Airfix kit, the 1990s release of this Dambusters aircraft, uh, the original moulding being from around 1981. Um, so yeah, it's like, okay, um, what's, that went together beautifully. Absolutely no fuss at all. That's another Harry. Sorry, Harry. Uh, that's what I'm watching on there, so sorry, Harry. <laughs> but yeah, it went together like anything, fantastically. Um, see, it's funny, I'm aware of it after I've done it rather than before I did it. I'll try and be more aware before so I'll stop doing it. But um, that went together the same, wonderfully. And the whole thing was done, what? Finished this Wednesday, started the day before New Year's. So I'll take a quick calendar. Yeah, about three weeks. That took me about three weeks, given I had to go to work during the day as well. So I wasn't able to do it constantly. I wasn't able to do it 24 hours a day or anything like that. Three weeks. See, it didn't rush. It's taken time still. That doesn't have an insane amount of stuff inside. In fact, I added stuff to that one um, in, in the form of adding a full crew at the front, which took about hour at worst this was days working on the interior of this for some people not going to see so yeah i'm thinking perhaps all these other people because i've seen builds of it where you leave one side of the fuselage off and they built like the framework round but then obviously you're not putting the two halves together so you're avoiding that problem straight away i'm wondering if all the ones that have been built now if you have built one of these and you've done it and you've got it so that the um All the interiors in it, it's gone together beautifully. Let me know how you did it down in the comments. I will be interested to know. This isn't like, it's, it's impossible to do it, but it's just what I can see that's causing the problem. So when I come to do, I'm still going to do this one because now I've started it, so now it counts. <laughs> very loose, I know, very, very tenuous um, pull in, but I'm going to have to build this one and I might have to build them side by side or at the very least get this one to the same stage this one's at. I'm going to leave all the stuff out of that one. I'm going to put in the cockpit area. I'm going to put in the bit where the front going to, would sit, the bomb aim front going to sit the seat at the front. The bits that you would definitely see. Yeah, potentially see. Because also that, that part the front going to also goes into also forms part of the uh, the flooring for the, well, the, the part of the, the bomb aim's window there. So, yes, I'm going to have to do them side by side now. It does mean I'm going to have to go trawling now and find a Shackleton or see if I've got I've got some transfers for a Shackleton already. So I'm hoping they might be ones for this version. Um, there's Suez Crisis ones. I think they're for, so I thought I thought they were for the MR3, but I think they're actually for the MR2 here. So um, yeah, so I'm going to have to see about those. I'll see some other, other markings for one, basically. Um, and I'm going to have to build that one. Or say at the very least, if I don't fully build it, I'm just going to get to this stage and see what the difference is. Do a correct comparison of closing up that fuse large by just putting the bare necessities in there. Now, obviously, one of the bare necessities is the um, the floor, which includes the bomb bay here, um, because that's what we mount the wing spars onto. On the here, which is obviously that's really important to keep that nice and nice and uh, what's it is notice there's no wing spar for the rear tail hmm. but um yes uh, i think i think that's, that's something i have to do but the, the thing is if that one then comes together absolutely as beautifully as that lancaster did given the age difference between the, the two models i mean i built the revel which was the old uh frog shackleton the frogleton i think i called it back then um even that that fought me. That fought me a hell of a lot in other places. The fuselage, they didn't have all this rubbish inside it. And actually, as I say that, I start to remember that, uh, yeah, I didn't have I didn't have the same fight with that. And I think I even said, oh, that's so much better than the last one I was trying to build because it didn't do this to me. This one is fighting me. Um, so Greg, actually, my, my good chum, who I went to yesterday, Sir, if you are watching this one, as it may interest you, um, obviously I gave you one of the shacks 
I'm going to go with this one, didn't I? This is the one I'm doing. This is the AUW2 boxing. You might want to hold off and see how this goes. <laughs> because um, if, it, if it works best without all the stuff inside, and you're okay not having that stuff in there, I think I think it's going to be the sensible option is just to, to, to do it that way, leave it that way. Um, and, and just put the bare necessities in, inside it. I do think that's the way it's going. Now, this is something I wanted to touch on. This is well, it's, it's a two-part rant. I said it's fun, 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 the two problems I have with it. Uh, well, there's actually a three-part to this. I'll put the third one in as well while we're at it. Um, and that is this. If this stuff is causing us issues, fit issues like this, and you can't see it, we leave it out. Okay, that's the fix. Brilliant. Glorious. But there's a bit at the back of my brain going, yeah, but you've paid for that. When you brought the kit, you've paid for that part, which is probably why some people put it in. But you've paid for that part, and it's causing problems. You've left it out. How could the model have been slightly cheaper if they'd left not, not gone to the trouble of tooling all that area and putting it all in? Because most times, for after, after market will see to interior details if you people really desperately clamour for them. And in the age of 3D printing, people could probably print up a load of, um, well, on this the radar and sonar stuff to go down the inside of the fuselage and some seats and things. Or scratch build, of course. Um, you know. Uh, you, think you, are, you are paying for this. Um, now, I did pick up from the Middle of the Day Museum another Effort's kit. This is a Lancaster B2. So, really cool about buying it at the museum that's just across the airfield from where all the B2s were made. This is the Bristol Hercules engine, Lancaster was rather than the Merlin engine. Wants to be finished as option B, which is for uh, of uh, three group and uh, number, number 514 Squadron, Royal Air Force, named Fanny Firkin based at Water Beach in Cambridgeshire in November 1944, specifically, but uh, yes, the, uh, what did I call that's a 40 quid kit. Now, they've not put any photographs, any pictures of the cattle on the outside of this, but I'll be interested to see how much interior stuff comes with this one. I already know it's got more in there because there's a map for the navigator table and stuff. Now, just peering into that one there, I can barely see behind me. It was just all just black behind him. So will I bother putting stuff like that in? Probably not. Especially as they were black inside. Um, late war. Um, they, they were black inside, so... <laughs> you know. And the final thing. Now, I've built... A number of airfits kits over the past year or so. Um, I've got the Fuga down there, which is actually coming on quite nice. Now I'll just quickly show you that. It's on, his, it's on his stand. He's not glued onto the stand, but there is the Fuga already from masking up and painting. Old kit's gone together nicely. But that ties into something lovely because that is not the same plastic as that Shackleton. That is not the same plastic. As the Hurricane. Now remember, was it, was it Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? I started a Hurricane build. Airfix 132 scale, starter kit one. It's now on the pile of shame as a paint mule, potentially, if I need to try out anything. Because the tailwheel broke. While it's been sitting. Um, I remember having to re repair the tail wheel on the Mark 19 Spitfire, actually pin it in, drill a hole, pin it up through, because again it's the same plastic. This plastic, I know it's been a complaint to other people, I was going to have my voice to the collective here on this one, is way too soft. Now on the Shackleton, on these bigger parts on the Shackleton, it's actually doing me a favour in a way with that. Um, it's got a bit more strength and the size is doing me a favour. A little bit more strength um, and it does you know in its favor it glues really well because it's so soft but it's, it's not it's not as good quality as the plastic that Lancaster was made out of that glued really nicely but it's also sturdy 
So, yeah. Um, there's a few kits I've had to strike off charge that were in the work in progress section and technically should have been finished because they've just... And that is a pure ethics thing. So I actually worry for this 24 scale Spitfire. Whether it's the same plastic, I know it's been made in this country. This is tends to be with the ones that they manufactured in India. <laughs> you can't blame the Indians. You know, they get, they'll get given the spec, won't they? And whatever the formula is for the plastic airfix once it's made out of in a day, it's the book. The book stops with airfix, and the 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 formula, whatever they said, this is the type of plastic we want. And yes, we're happy to sign this off. So yeah, um, just a few things to think about there. But uh, I mean, I have built the. Airfix one seventy two scale hurricane in that plastic before and it was fine. Okay, it went together fine. But this is now the second third kit I've had to put to one side. One of the others is the gladiator. Um, I started gluing the fuse off together, copied together, uh, left it to dry, came back, and it just started to sag on one side because. The point to the wheel just started doing this so you got the, the little rod that comes out you put the wheel onto that because the rod's actually bending under the weight of the aircraft not the way the glue is I let it all dry if I always prop if I'm uh, gluing the aircraft wheels down just quickly scan if I want an easy reach so behind me then I'll rest it Um, yeah, you can do it, come I can get you down, John, mate. So we're doing an aircraft wheels down like this, this is an airfix kit. I'll rest it somewhere, so say, just for sake of argument, on the corner of a box or something where, there we are, where the wheels can be support, hung out so they're not resting on that, it's resting on the wings, and it can just dry in peace and quiet without being disturbed. That's that's how I do it, so the Gladiator was not on its wheels before they were fully dry, and that's happened afterwards. So that's another one off the list. Now it worries me because I have got this, this is another work in progress I need to finish first at some point, is the Dakota. Now how are those going to go? But it's another one with a big interior. So again. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. But I'm gonna say I'm gonna have to get that shackle bag. I don't think we're called I can't think in my head somewhere they were called shackle bags. If you know other uh, down there, they're 40,000 rivets flying in close formation. Um <laughs> vibrating close formation um would be would be more accurate as a new definitely name. But uh, yes, the um just to get to the same stage of this, at the very least, I think that's all I will do because I don't I got a bit of spitfire burnout last year because I was building some of your spits. Um but uh, yes, now I'm not entirely cut off from Airfix. Like I say, I'm not on a Airfix suck. This is why. But these problems are just pertinent to some Airfix builds I've, I've done. Given that I've built uh, Fujimi, Revel, and Tamiya as well this past year. Uh, is that right? No, not Revel, sorry. Uh, Pixels Hobbies. It's not the one and I need that I built. But. Yeah, I've built a number of, you know, some other companies this year. Obviously, Tammy, you never really have any problems with them, do you? But, uh, uh, so it's probably not fair to include them. But, you know, the others, they've all just gone together. Even the older Airfix ones, I think that's what speaks more to me. That old Airfix Lang has not got a, a gap in that fuselage at all. From, te from nose to tail, all around, absolutely fine. No gaps in the wing joints. No gaps anywhere, really, where there shouldn't be. Um... You know, you can do it before Airfix comes. What if what's, what's going on here? I've clearly got the ability because they say, hey, if you can build an old Airfix kit, you can build anything. You know, because you've got to fettle it, you've got to do this, that, and the other. No, what's a bit of fettling with that? So I don't want to doubt my ability. I'm no, I'm no Plasmo or Scale Model Aircraft or Becker's Models or Harry Houdini or anything like that. I'm no, no, no. I'm not going to hold a candle to these guys, but I just do what just makes me, I do it to the standard that makes me happy. Um, but at the same point in time, I've clearly got some of, enough ability 
to get a model, model together that's fuselage joined, looks nice, well, looks happy, good enough for me. And uh, yeah, so it's going on with this one. And the plastic failing is another issue entirely, which again worries me about this. I'm hoping again at the tail wheel assemblies when we be sufficiently sturdy enough because of the bigger size and thicker things on the, the tractor is just bigger all around on everything. It uses a lot of things are bigger on it. Um, I was hoping that's going to win the day, as it were, you know. But uh, yes, it's going to be interesting. So I will do an update video. It won't be anywhere near as long as this. You still see and Thank you very much. I hope if you've got any comments to make, and this is a Harry's I'm going to use. Sorry, Harry. Um, you know, leave it down below. Keep it respectful. You know, if you really, really love Airfix, I know there's certain channels on on YouTube that really are fantastic spokespeople for Airfix. I mean, um, I think it's Moss One Six Five Models. I think he's he's one of them. He adores Airfix. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing. I'm, I'm not criticising, by the way. You know, I'm just saying. You know, the, you know, if you really love Airfix, go and check him out, please. You know. He, he covers everything they do. He's even got the, as soon as they announce the club kits, he had a video up showing all about it and everything like that. He absolutely loves Airfix. And sometimes he, I feel he can attack Tamiya a bit too harshly. Um, I feel that that's probably not the way to do it. But hey, you know, if you read on Airfix, that's fine. And if it was all to the quality of that rank, or I'll be fair, the Mark Point Spitfire built last year from Airfix, the Desert American Spitfire. That was glorious. I could build those to the end of the earth if I had to. I agree. If I had to, if I got sentenced to build Mark V Spitfires and got given the choice of kit, the Tamiya one would be pretty high up my list, but uh, the Airfix one would also be up there. It would be a tough choice between the two. It was it was a wonderful model. Um, the Tamiya one, you see, and Will, pointed, Will, thank you for pointing out an, an error I, I met, well, something that's occurred with it, not sure actually how I if it was something I did or something just reacted badly to whatever. Uh, one of the yellow bands is actually torn slightly, but the trouble is with that Tamiya kit. I can't give you an honest opinion on it because my mojo for Spitfire's completely run out at that point. So I tried to avoid that with Shackleton's because I have got a fair few to do, well, a fair few options but very to me. Um I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna get to the point where I'm closing the fuse large up on that one. And then I will do you a little video just to go, well, I've done it. This is the result. This is what I found out. So, yes, yeah, so thank you for sticking with me. I can see this, this segment alone has been 21 minutes. I think the first bit was um, four or five minutes. So I think it's got a half an hour video here, uh, plus the picture. So, yes, yeah, thank you for watching. 